My name is Gary Wolin, and I sell artist paper. We're in the MacArthur Park area of Los Angeles, just west of downtown. We bring in papers from all over the world. We're now 88 years old, so I'm here now 48 years. 48 years. I'm Carrie, and I sell letterpress. Well, my dad came from Mexico. He learned how to be a linotype operator, and he became a linotype operator here, and um, he ended up buying the place, and that's when Aardvark Letterpress was born. G-E-O-R-G-E-L-U-C-A-S. There's George Lucas. Well, there, there you can see the mold. What we're going to do is we're going to put these molds inside this machine, lock it in, and when we hit the button, it's going to inject molten lead. Here's the temperature gauge. It's like 600 degrees. We hit this button, and it's going to shoot lead into the mold. Hit that. You can hear that. This is released, so that's done. I gotta put those letters away. And there's the lead slug. It's backwards, of course, because when we print it, it'll print the other way. And that's that. And then and then now we can give this to the pressman. We'll put it in the press and just start stamping. We do a lot of wedding invitations, announcements, a lot of business cards, personal stationery. We're doing a menu for Bill Clinton's 65th birthday right now. And I said, yeah, we can do it. I mean, it's, we really have to hustle and get all the, get the paper together. I went next door to Gary and I ordered the paper that we need to print. The, the company peaked in the late 70s, early 80s, which today, in today's economy, would be probably about three, three to four million. Well, the, it's a little different now. It's down to, to Gary. You want to see me uh, cut something? Yeah. Okay. Oh, hi, it's Gary. Hi, Gary. Hi, could you uh, have the power turned on to the machine for a few minutes? Sure. Thanks. It's on their power. Well, we have an electrical issue. So I plugged in key, some key things uh, out here and in the office, and we ran a cord all the way to there, you know, plugged it in, so we're on their power now. What was the problem with the electricity? Couldn't pay the bill. Explain. It's even hard for me to understand how we can be so busy running around every day as crazy as we do, but yet, you know, kind of still just paying the bills and paying ourselves a, a, a very modest salary. And I mean, I mean, very modest. Sometimes I can't believe that people keep spending the money that they do on the services we provide. Like sometimes I just think, people just say, I don't need all that shit. I don't need to spend $500 for a set of note cards and, and, and it'll dry up, you know, especially in a recession. I can cut something that needs to be uh, cut. Oh, chipboard. You may be familiar. It's, it's, it's traditional recycled grayish, brownish, thin cardboard. Put it in the machine. Turn the power on, which is over here. Ready? Okay, now the machine's ready to cut. In order to cut, you have to have your hands on both of these at the same time. So there's no way that you can chop your fingers off. The board is now in half. That's it. I like that. <laughs> So this we just do whenever the stack's getting low. Make sure that there's enough out there for people to 
Uh, this is the box here. It's marked 8.5 by 11, basis 90, that's the weight, chipboard. They're only 19 cents a piece. So we we'll put this on the stack and we have a good supply for the next few customers. Well, yes, it, it is. It has been extre extremely difficult uh, to the point of uh, there are days go by that there can be absolutely no business at all. It, it starts you thinking, what's, what's happening? I mean, I don't really know when the next sale is going to come in, you know, when the next order is going to come over the phone. And when it's that, that quiet and days go by and I'm not making any money, I can't, I can't pay my bills. Well, the, the thing that keeps me going more than anything is, is my love of paper. You want to succeed and, and, and that's the only arena you have to succeed in. I come in the next day, I, you know, I pump myself up again, try to stay positive. I'm doing a good job of it. I, I, I come in the next day, say positive, I say, you know, yesterday is yesterday. You know, maybe someday I'd be a writer. Well, you know, who knows, but, but I pretty much abandoned that, you know. I've abandoned being a professional baseball player. You know, all those things start dying off and it's like, well, where can you still shine? Things that you can envision even without being an artist, envision how many things that that piece of paper could possibly be used for by a creative person. I like taking these old technologies, but going forward with them and using them in, in, in modern ways and, and integrating them with modern techniques. Something seems to happen. Some activity starts to stir. Somebody who I quoted a job to two months ago all of a sudden surfaces and I make it through the, the month. It's like, uh, it's like a miracle. We don't have a whole lot going other than this. You know, we don't have, you know, we don't make much money. We don't, you know, own property or anything. You know, it's, it's like, this, this is our, uh, this is our thing. And, so, we, so you take pride in it.